a lot of the horses have their own little stories as well. You know, people will come, especially the Melbourne Cup winners. There's one lady who was pregnant and she backed Rogue and Josh, she was at the Cup, and the deal was if the horse won, the baby got named after the horse. So she's then brought the little boy Josh to meet the horse. I'm uh, Andrew Clark, I'm the CEO and the Veterinary Director here at, at Living Legends and we're at Woodlands Historic Homestead and Park, the home of Living Legends. Living Legends is, uh, we're a not-for-profit group um, and our aim is to provide, give people the opportunity to have access basically to meet and mingle with retired champion racehorses. A lot of these champion horses sort of disappear from the public and they have long-term following and then all of a sudden they retire and people can't get up close and, and pat them and they disappear. So that was the concept that it would be a, a retirement property for champion racehorses where people could come and interact with the horses themselves. Mice and Power, he's, he's really our Lord Mayor, I guess. He's 25 this year. Um, he still thinks he's a four-year-old. You know, one of, one of these sort of blokes who's in there perhaps late 50s, still wants to play football how he was when he was 25. This bloke, world champion stayer, but he's the only horse to ever lead all the way to win the Melbourne Cup and the Caulfield Cup. And then the following year, you can put in the Cox Plate onto his CV as well. So just an extraordinary strong stayer. Might and Power, the leader inside the 200. Two lengths in front of Linesman and then Doremus on the outside. Might and Power, the leader. Doremus trying hardest, coming at him. Might and Power and Doremus. Doremus getting the Might and Power. They hit the line photo. Oh, nothing between them. Doremus or Might and Power in a close go. With kids, people in wheelchairs, he's gentle. The vast majority of ladies, he's gentle. Um, but he'll find the odd bloke that he doesn't like. And if he assesses that he doesn't like you and you try to pat him, he'll say, go away, ears back. Every paddock has its boss, and in this, pa in this paddock, might and power's the boss. Pairing the horses up is an interesting challenge. You've got to have the personality of the horses that are together. We've got to match them by age. You've got to look a little bit at their nutrition as well. So Might and Power and Paris Lane, they're on a fairly high plane of nutrition. Might and Power had some colic surgery, so we've got to feed him a little bit more. Paris Lane, on the other hand, is um, he's our oldest horse, so he needs a higher plane of nutrition. So those two are together. It's personality, it's temperament, it's what their, their sort of nutritional and veterinary needs are as well. Two Melbourne Cup winners here, Efficient from 2007 and Brew from 2000. The interesting thing on Brew, it was the last Foster's Melbourne Cup, so a horse called Brew wins it. So we get quite a few people here and some of the blokes will say, you know, I backed Brew, but they'll really come cr clean that the, really the reason that they backed him was that they were, they'd had a few drinks at the races and they just fancied a horse called Brew for the last Foster's Melbourne Cup. Coming home well on the outside now is Brew. Carpstead weighs battling away and yippee yo yo. Brew hit the lead at the 200 from second coming. The stable mates are clear from yippee yo yo, but it's Brew going for home 100 out. McAvoy wheels a whip and Brew draws away to win the Melbourne Cup. Two links to yippee yo yo second. second and coming third, Carpstead way a half in away fourth. The other interesting story about Brew is that there's a well-known um, fellow called Chopper Reed who had a very long and colourful uh, criminal history really and Chopper was a regular visitor here and Chopper's favourite horse was Brew but Chopper, it wasn't because he won the 2000 Melbourne Cup, it was because when Brew retired he tried out for the police force and he failed police academy so Chopper was pretty convinced that Brew was one of theirs so he was their, he, he's, he's his favourite horse. He's been rolling in the mud. And efficient, you know, he is an amazing horse really. He won the Derby as a three-year-old and the Melbourne Cup as a four-year-old. And the last horse to do that was Farlap, so it sort of puts it in a perspective of what a really strong horse um, he is. Efficient is coming down the outside. Purple Moon for Rolly. Got to Marla now. Here comes Efficient. He's mowing them down out wide. Purple Moon in front. Efficient the only danger. Purple Moon in front. Efficient is getting there. Efficient getting to Purple Moon. Efficient is going to win the cup. Half a length to Purple Moon. Three lengths to Marla. 
He is the first horse to complete the Derby and come back and win the Melbourne Cup since Farlap. They love the contact with people, they love their routine. You know, if breakfast or dinner's 10 minutes late, the horses are standing there looking up at the stable, well, what's going on here? You know, why are things a bit late? But at the end of the day, when the front gate's closed, they're horses, they're out in a paddock, they'll have a roll in the mud, they just enjoy life. So I think there's a little bit of everything there for them. These two are our odd couple. You've got Apache Cat, who's sort of the self-confident young sprinter, 10 years younger than Josh. And then you've got Josh here, who's one of Bart's Melbourne Cup horses, so just a really laid back horse. So two totally different personalities, but they're really, really good mates. And Joshy won the 1999 Melbourne Cup, and it was one of Sheikh Mohammed's horses that ran second, the world's biggest owner, really. Um, Wendy from Darwin's won her Melbourne Cup, and Sheikh Mohammed's still working on getting his. The Warrior in Central Park with Zaza Bell on the outside, and Rogan Josh, travel mates trying to get into the clear, and so is the hind. It's tight there. Rogan Josh with Central Park, and the Warrior, the three leaders from Zaza Bell on the outside. It's Central Park. The Warrior and Rogan Josh. Rogan Josh and Central Park. Rogan Josh, Bart did it again. Rogan Josh from Central Park. Photo third either Lahar or Zaza Bell from travel mate and the Warrior. Josh is a very, very laid back horse, was sort of running around in Bunbury. Very interesting name too, his sire is Old Spice, his dam is Eastern Mystique and you put the two together and come up with Rogue and Josh, so it's just about a, he just about had to win something big with, a, with a, such a special name. We're the closest uh, tourist attraction to Melbourne Airport um, and interestingly you see the horses don't take any real notice of the uh, aeroplanes. When horses evolved there was nothing that attacked them from the air so they're pretty relaxed about aeroplanes but it's very interesting some of the international horses, some of the Hong Kong horses that have come in the first time they see kangaroos that's when they really start to wonder what the heck's going on. You can see 50 horses coming down the laneway and that you can just see the horses thinking I hope these things don't eat horses because if they eat horses I'm in a lot of trouble here because they do everything that a horse doesn't really like they move suddenly they move erratically and that's the sort of thing that uh, um, as they've evolved that it's the sort of that's the lions that's the sort of wolves that will attack them so kangaroos do everything that a horse is uh, programmed to sort of avoid. I think the horse is, is very much central to the culture of, of, of Australians and you see that through the Melbourne Cup, you know. I think that, that you know, we're, we're probably one of the few nations that has a national holiday for the running of the Cup. Each of our states has racing ministers, you know, you talk to people overseas, there's no ministers for racing in the government in Europe or in America or in Kentucky, so horses are very deep in our culture. You know, we used to have Saintly would come here. Um, Bart would let him come and have a short term visit and there's a lady here one day patting saintly by the gate and she'd been there all day pretty much, she'd been down to the others back to saintly, into the homestead back to saintly and I met her near the gate and she said great horse and I said oh saintly you know wonderful and she leaned over a little bit like this and she said well we lost one of our children and the anniversary of the death was Melbourne Cup Day and the family backed saintly because he was the horse from heaven. Now, and she said, I never thought I'd get to see this horse. And you're looking into the eyes of a mum who's lost a baby or one of her children, you know, that's a big loss. And in some way, a horse can help you get over that or deal with it. That tells you how deep in, this, in our psyche that the Melbourne Cup really is. You know, she walked one way crying, I walked the other way crying. So you, it, it just sort of is an example of, of how deep in our culture the cup is. We have the memorial garden, I think that's really important. We have the horses, some of our horses that have passed away here, that are buried there, and some of the international horses. There, there was um, Admire Ratke who passed away um, following the Melbourne Cup a couple of years ago and I think it's important that we show the horses respect and dignity and that we provide that opportunity f as well for people to come and respect the horse and pay their respects to the horse. And for a lot of people they come and they'll pay their respects. You've got Admire Ratke there, we get a lot of Japanese visitors who will come um, over the spring carnival and then some of our better loosen up, Dream is one of our Melbourne Cup winners.
I guess I say to people, I'm a worn out old vet with some worn out old horses. Um, but it is, it's an amazing job to be able to work with these horses, to work with the students, um, to be able to take the horses out and, and do all of these things. Very, very special, you know. And we've had our challenges and some days it can be a little bit frustrating, but for other days you think for what we've been through and the challenges we've had, how wonderful it is. You know, we've got 20 group winning horses here at one of the most historic thoroughbred properties in the Southern Hemisphere. We have the horses going out to events, doesn't happen anywhere else in the world, and we have all these people and students coming in to learn about horses and to, to enjoy meeting and mingling with our champions.